Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Luke chapter 9, verse 28 and 29. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for strength to be in your word and stay in your word. God, keep us in your word. Stir up your word in us. Lord God, let it just gurgle out lord let it just overflow by the leading of your spirit god help us to apply your word in our daily lives and live out your word in jesus mighty name we pray amen all right you guys so this is scripture from the lord we are in luke chapter 9 verse 28 and 29 verse 28 and it came to pass about an eight about in eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into the, a mountain to pray. So this is Jesus and um, the disciples, and they have just performed that miracle where they fed the people with the two fish and five loaves of bread, and um, they, they've gone off into a mountain, right? And it says, um, and it came to pass, about in eight days after these sayings. So eight is a number of, of order, new order and new administration. That's just something as a side note, but um, eight days after these saying, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. So that word pray, I looked it up and it means pray. <laughs> There are a few words in the Bible that are like that. We just talked about one of them previously. Sing means sing and pray means pray. And so this, this pray was um, basically seeking God, right? We, we're meditating on his word. We're seeking his face. Whatever happens in prayer happens in prayer, right? It, when you're praying to God, it is coming to him and communicating with him and communing with him, right? We are spending time with the rock from whence we were hewn. We're going back to that rock. We are, we're going back to that place that we came from. We're going home. In other words, we are tapping into home. And when we, when we tap into God, that is tapping into home because he created us. He breathed us out. He gave us flesh. He knitted us together. He created us, right? And in that, you know, we are going back to the place that we came from, right? Um, no matter how modern science is, and I've said this before, we can't create atoms, right? We can't create things we have to always use something else we have to use something that exists so no matter how much a scientist will say oh we created this right or we cloned this or whatever it gives you the connotation that they made something but they actually didn't make something they only were able to hijack another process and and use that right we only god creates right only god fashions creates the atoms and creates a system. And therefore, when we go back to him, we're going back to the one that fashion created the system completely from scratch, which is himself, right? He is the maker of all good and perfect things. So when they went up to that mountain, they went up to commune with their creator. They went up to, to have a moment with him. And it says in verse 29, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. So it says he prayed, right? And as he prayed, and that's Jesus, right? It's not the disciples. It's Jesus praying. Why? We'd later find out that they were sleeping, right? And um, it, the thing that God has kind of been pushing in my spirit is that in this season of, of the enemy's harassment in this, the season of this end times, and also in the season of where there's great dissipation of the spirit and a great falling away, 
the thing that we need to do is pray, right? We need to go back to the rock, right? We need to go back to that place from whence we were hewn. We need to go back to our creator. He is the only one who can save us. He's the only one who can bring victory, right? That's what, that's one of the characteristics of salvation. Remember, we talked about that yesterday is salvation. And when you look it up, it says deliverance, welfare, prosperity, victory, right? And, and we're supposed to talk about those things from day to day. But, but in this particular circumstance, when he went to the mountain and he's communing with God, he's talking to God, right? That is where our salvation comes from. That is the one who is the answer to all of our problems. That is the one who's going to bring deliverance to our situation. He is the one who's going to increase our welfare and prosperity and our victory right? It is God. He's on the mountain. Help me, Holy Spirit. He is there and we need to come to him. This is what he was um, pressing into me is that in this season of harassment, in these end times where the enemy is desperate to attack, in these in this season of dissipation of the spirit. Why? Because we're drawn into the lust of this world and and drawn into um just participating and not thinking on the things of Christ. It could seem completely innocent. It could seem completely as if, you know, oh, it's just this. You know, I'm just going to the store to go shopping for more, blah, blah, blah. But if you're if you know the spirit is telling you to do something for him, if you know the spirit of the Lord is leading you and ushering you into something new, if you know the spirit of the Lord told you, I need you to go sell those clothes and I need you to stop shopping right? If, if the Lord is, is giving you manners in which he wants to trim your wick, then you need to listen, right? And you need to go to him in prayer if you cannot abide in that. If you're having problems with abiding, if you're having problems with dissipation of the spirit, if you're having problems with, with even enjoyment of seeking God's face, we need to come to him go to the rock from whence you are hewn, right? Because he is the only one who can solve those problems. We're so used to sometimes um, hiding those things and being in denial of those things. And God does not want us to be in denial. He wants us to bring it forth to him. He wants us to tell him about it. He wants us to lay it out before him, right? Go to that prayer closet. If the Holy Spirit is drawing you and telling you come, then you need to come, right? His yoke is easy and his burden is light. And if it feels heavy, then you need to go take that heaviness to the one who can make it light. You need to take that heaviness back to the rock right? All that heaviness, it, it, it's representative of the cares of this world, right? It, it's representative of that struggle that's going on within. If it's a complete struggle for you, that's not always a bad thing, right? Sometimes it's a struggle to stay in the spirit, but then there becomes a time of deliverance, right? But if it's a constant struggle and you need God's help and you need to, to help uh, uh, call upon his name, then God call upon him, go to that rock, go to that place, right? From whence you were hewn and seek his face and allow him to, to change you, right? It says, as he prayed, he, Jesus, right? The disciples were sleeping, but as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, right? As he prayed, as he was in the presence of God, right? Remember there was a Moses and Elijah who were with him, but in, but while he was there, the fashion of his countenance was altered, right? God was there with them. How do we know God was there? Because God spoke at a point, right? A, a cloud um, kind of came and overshadowed them. God, God is always there right? God is always there. He hears and sees everything. And he said that this was his son, right? Listen to him. 
But here it says the fashion of his countenance was altered. That means his face was changed, right? Something happened to Jesus' face when he prayed. That's some deep prayer, y'all. That's some some good communion with God. Have you ever come out of your prayer room and look like your face was shining? It happens. It happens to a lot of people. I felt like once my face was shining, but it happens, right? Because when you're in the presence of God, you will reflect his glory. That means that he gives you something that resides in you right? Remember in the last scripture that we studied, um, Psalms 38, 10, um, David was saying that the light was gone from his eyes, right? That was that spirit he needed to pray. And in this writing of Psalms 38, that's his prayer. That's his communion. That's what brings back the spirit, right? That's what causes your countenance to come back, right? For your countenance to be fashioned, Hallelujah. So Lord, fashion our countenance. Let us look like we've been around you, God. Let people be able to tell when we have been in your presence. Let us spend so much time in your presence that when we come around people of this world who are dark and afraid, let them not be able to help, but see the glory that is shining from us and let them want to be like us. Let them want to know what it is, God. Let them want to to be drawn to us and let your Holy Spirit tell us the words that we need to say. It says, and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered you need to change your face you need to take your face and put it on the ground and and get before the king you need to take your face into your prayer room you need to take your face wherever you need to pray and you need to go before the king of kings amen It says, and his raiment was white and glistering. I had to look that um, that, um, um, word up and it just means dazzling, white and dazzling. And so um, God's clothes even reflected his glory. It says his raiment was white and glistering. So if, if you are in God's presence, not only your face, but your cover, right? It's going to glow. You're going to, your, your garments are going to glow. Your, your, your calling is going to shine, right? Because when you've been in God's presence, you can't help but look like him. Some of us need to pray. Let's pray. Dear father, God, you know what we have need of. We can't hide anything from you. Lord Jesus, have your way in us. Help us to commune with you. Help us to be in your presence and abide in your presence and let us look like you, God. In this time of harassment, in this time of evil, in this time of the patient of spirit and the the constant cry and draw of the world, Lord God, Help us to abide in you. Help us to pray. Help us to stay in constant prayer day and night. Let us talk to you. Let us not stop talking to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.